Here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, Father's Word, Book of Daniel, Chapter 4, authored by none other than Nebuchadnezzar himself, King of Babylon. It would really be nice if this King of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, was the King of Babylon of the Book of Revelation. He isn't. He was only a type. He was a educated person, loved the books of learning, and um, all, all around a pretty good guy, though he had a temper. But he's had another dream, and as we got into chapter 4, and he dreamed of this huge tree. And, you know, God describes entities, and what he did, he made that same statue of the king of Babylon that we saw back in chapter 2 into a tree, and finally, the angels, I mean, the, um, the uh, beast of the field, the fowls of the air nested in it. And I mentioned in passing Ezekiel chapter 31, where, um, and I'm going to turn there. You're not going to have it, but that's fine. Just listen a moment. Um, it speaks of the Assyrian in verse 3, but the Assyrian has no article here. The, the word in the Hebrew is tiasha. And what it is is Satan trying to play like a cedar of Lebanon, which symbolizes our people. And, and a, a tea asher is just a plain old box cedar, pretty common tree. But um, it, it, and what it's doing basically is saying, Pharaoh, who do you think you are compared to Satan, all right, the king of Babylon? I'm going to pick it up in the verse 6 so that you see the same tree uh, in a book just prior to Daniel. And it reads, all, verse 6, chapter 31, book of, of Ezekiel, and it reads, And that all the fowls of heaven made their nest in his boughs, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Uh, he was subtle. Thus was he fair in his greatness in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters, meaning people. The cedars in the garden of God, well, what is the garden of God? Well, it's Eden, of course, it giving you Satan the tree in the garden. Uh, a lot of people like to call it an apple, whatever, whatever turns you on, okay? And, uh, could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I mean, God would state in um, Ezekiel chapter 28, I made him the full pattern. I mean, he had it all, okay? But that's back when he was good, before he went bad. Ezekiel 28, verse 9 of this chapter. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches so that all the trees of Eden, uh, there you have it, that were in the garden of God envied him. Man, boy, Eve sure did, okay? He, in her innocence, he took her in, okay? 10, therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, then he hath shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. And, and so then you can see within this vision, an angel of God said, cut that thing down. Put a band around the root. And of course, this means Nebuchadnezzar, which the tree will, you'll soon have the interpretation, was that tree. But, and, but it was the type. But it's going to shoot forth roots again. When? In the millennium. Therefore, when we give this interpretation, you as a student of God's Word must look both at the type and that that shall be concerning the book of Revelation. Okay, returning to chapter 4, the great book of uh, Daniel, let's pick it up in verse 19. A word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads... Uh, then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished. He was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar, of course, this is Daniel. It was a name given him. Uh, it means, O Bel, save his soul, protect his soul. 
It's Daniel, okay? Belteshazzar answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them that hate the and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. And of course, when you look to the future in the root stage of this thing, when the shoots spring forth, um, you see those that um, would hate him well enough, but also you see this hour of temptation, which is written of in Revelation chapter 17. And actually, when applied to Revelation chapter 9, you have a, this one hour of temptation is a five-month period divided in halves. This is why that uh, <clears throat> it is stated in Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, at the uh, seventh uh, seal, that there was silence in heaven one half hour. Why? The old trunk's cast out onto the earth. It's peaceful in heaven, but look out on earth, all right? Uh, weaving this together, but it bothered Daniel. You know, this is bad news for him. Verse 20, the tree, Daniel continues, the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, which height reached into the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth. And I want you to compare that to the Ezekiel 31 that we foreread, 21, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. I mean, you know, it was, it was easy going, a chicken in every pot. Prosperity, coming in peacefully and prosperously in the deception. Is it any wonder that people of this earth are deceived when from hard times, that is to say making it, so to speak, to this? You know, they're gonna think he's great. That's why he wants to play instead of Christ. And uh, verse 22, it is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. How, how long to the end of the earth? That means dispensational wise also. <clears throat> Those roots do grow. And um, make no mistake about it. Many people like to try to affix, well, who is this really talking about? Well, let me ask you a question. We, I took you back to Ezekiel 31. Who was in the Garden of Eden? What tree was in the Garden of Eden? The tree, there were two specifically named, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And which did God say not to partake of, meaning the wicked, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And we're talking about the same tree. And we're talking now as we begin to look forward to the deception that the type for which Nebuchadnezzar would be. Now, let me give you a little clue. What God wants you to see from this chapter written by Nebuchadnezzar is that God sets up and uses whomever he chooses, that God is in control of all nations. And, well, many would say, well, why would God allow that? Because he gave man the knowledge to prevent it if man won't prevent it, hey, have a good trip, friend. Verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher, that's an angel, and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, not heaven, in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the uh, dew of heaven, meaning water it all right, keep it alive, and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. And naturally, seven times, seven dispensations, millennium age. What happens when seven times pass over? Prophetically speaking, not to Nebuchadnezzar, but to the king of Babylon in the end times. He makes a little trip into the fire, okay, called the lake of fire. 
and uh, we begin then the eighth uh, dispensation. But his, though he is handicapped, a ban is upon him, and he is in heaven, helped there by Michael the archangel, his evil spirit, wet by the dew of heaven to torment whomsoever will, that is to say, allows it. When God gives you the authority and the power to conquer something, do it. Don't just talk about it, do it. You don't have to put up with that that is negative, that uh, is allowed by this one. He's handicapped because you have the hammer, the big one, to call the Holy Spirit. Verse 24, this is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king. This, this is what God Almighty has sentenced you to. And this is kind of why Daniel dreaded telling him, verse 25, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. This is what God wants you to know. Now, what he's going to do, he's going to pump Nebuchadnezzar up pretty good here. You know, he's a pretty good man. He's going he's to bless everything he's got. And then he's going to just jerk the carpet right out from under him. This uh, disease, and it is a disease, it's lycanthropia. It's called the leukus, the wolf disease. And, um, um, and uh, an, I mean, there are cases recorded. As a matter of fact, it is this sickness of Nebuchadnezzar is even recorded historically. You with companion Bibles, it'll be well, pretty well documented for you. Those of you that wish to check it for you further, no problem. As a matter of fact, there are two major events that transpired about this time that the Companion Bible will fill you in on, uh, giving a double documentation as to the time this event transpired, because it did, okay? This dream from God came true exactly as it's written. That's why you can count on God. But whatever you do, don't forget the lesson that God intends you to know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, for whatever purpose. And as we, dis as we discussed in a prior lecture, there are negatives and there are positives, but in God's plan, it all ultimately ends positive for those that love the Lord. Verse 26, And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. In other words, you can take this, you can amplify it. Satan is cast into the abyss during the time of the millennium to be released for a short season at the end. But, um, and that root still growing. But in the type, that is to say, this Nebuchadnezzar writing this chapter, he will be restored, and you're going to find a beautiful prayer that he made to Almighty God when he was restored. Um, I suppose it would be uh, appropriate in as much as we have here uh, watchers from heaven, that supernatural entities, all right? As we discovered back in chapter 2, some of those supernatural entities, uh, watchers tried to mix with the daughters of man, Enosh, mortal man, flesh. And um, I want you to play, pay particular attention that um, uh, he ruleth in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. And there will be a time coming that he will give it to the supernatural. It's important that you keep that in mind for that in itself ultimately sets up a time segment that allows you to fix 
affix yourself in God's word as far as time is concerned. Verse 27, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Naturally, that would be the captives, and Daniel being one of them, okay? If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. In other words, you got it real nice, you got a real tranquil way here, and uh, who, who knows but what God might give you another blessing. Now, um, flesh man is kind of strange, even Nebuchadnezzar, the one writing this uh, chapter. We're going to skip a year here. Do you know that a year makes so much difference to some people? They can have a, um, I'll call it a hair-raising experience that teaches you a lesson of, uh, of regard for whatever it might have been that terrified you, made a believer out of you. But let a year go by and they get pretty, pretty sloppy, okay? Sloppy agape, we might call it, all right? Well, that's what's going to happen to Nebuchadnezzar. See that it never happens to you. You're a watcher, a watchman, watch. Watch the signs of the times. Verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, this is his word, okay? And sometimes he'll write in the third party here, be that as it may. Verse 29. At the end of 12 months, he walked in Babylon of the, um, I'm sorry, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. I mean, looking good. Hey, we got a year gone by. I mean, this is mine, all mine. For as you can see, it's all mine. I got palaces. I got, I got it all. I am really something else. I, I. And, um, and he liked it. Verse 30, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon? that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, my, and for the honor of my majesty, not God's, not anyone else's, my I be something. You know, you get that I be disease and it's pretty bad. You get on ego trips and you, um, uh, what was the statement made just prior to this? Why was the dream um, to that the Most High ruleth in the, in the kingdom of men and given, giveth it to whomsoever he will? Do you think Nebuchadnezzar did all this? Hey, you know, that the old, um, there were the wonders of the world in Babylon. Hanging gardens, I mean the whole bit. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, makes one wonder about hanging gardens in the desert, but be that as it may. I mean, he was, he was a happy Joe. But he's got that old disease called I. When it was very clearly stated to him in the vision, it belongs to God, and God will give it to whomsoever he chooses. Now, that, that works today with your blessings. Don't, don't ever let some man take your blessings God gives blessings, you protect them. You hang on to them. You claim them. But don't you ever dare forget to give credit as to where those blessings came from. They came from your father. He's in control. When you do father's work, father is always going to reward you. But see, a year's time, 12 months, can make a big difference in some people's lives. You could even lose your way. But time doesn't mean all that much to our Father. When He speaks, it is spoken. And when He writes, it is written. You can count on it. As the King's word doesn't change, neither does our Father's. What lesson did He want this King to know? Hey, I can rip that whole kingdom right out of your hand just like that. Verse 31. When the word was in the king's mouth, I, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. 
the kingdom is departed from thee. Just like that. That old lie will get you, you know. When God gives blessings, he expects credit. Okay, 32. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know, I repeat, until thou know, until it sinks in your little old head, until it settles in your little old mind, till, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. You know, um, so it is in, uh, you know, many might say, well, well, just tell me one example of where this happened. Ezekiel 38, God rules. Finally, you know, we have from the north an attacking army that, that covers the sky as a cloud. And there's not much to defend us. But God himself places hooks in the mouth of the chief prince, and I'm going to say it in the Hebrew, the English is translated Meshach, but the chief prince is the Hebrew word Rosh, R-O-S-H. It would later be translated by the Volga, a uh, R-U-S, Rush, and then later, as you would know it, as not the people thereof, but the land thereof of Rusha. Ezekiel chapter 38, God stops it, not man. God controls, and, God, and hey, let me, let me just get it said again and let it settle in your mind. God does whatever he wants to. And do you know something? He doesn't have to ask permission. 33, the same hour, I mean right then, God doesn't mess around. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were growing like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird claws. And um, uh, part of the sign of lycanthropia, okay? Verse 34. At the end of the days, now here, here we've got Nebuchadnezzar picking this back up again from verses 1 through 3. He's, he has told you what happened to him. How everything he had, all these gorgeous, great buildings that he had built, had had built. God furnishing the bricks, no doubt. And, and it, was, it was pretty fascinating and you know, even in this generation, about 14, 15, 20 years ago, uh, Hussein of um, Iraq, which is Babylon, the old land of Babel, uh, rebuilt part of the buildings. I forget how many millions of bricks that he put in place. And they had a huge musical festival there in that same year. That was before the, if I remember right, it was even before the Iran-Iraq War, eight-year war, so it was some time back. But uh, there it was. But here, this king had everything. He had everything. I mean, I'm sure he had armies from every corner protecting. But there's one protection that you can have only if you're attuned to Almighty God, and that's protection of, for, and by Him. For He can rip, if you, you start trying to protect yourself from things of men and world, you're the same as unprotected, friend. You need God's protection. Because with all His might of the earth and world, Nebuchadnezzar was stripped clean in one, just while his mouth was open, while the words were in his, in his mouth, I am great. Whoa, bam, he's gone, okay? He's, uh, he's out with the coyotes, okay? He's a wolf man. I, I don't want to mislead you, but uh, Lycanthropia is from Lucas the wolf. 34, again, as I stated, this goes back to verses 1 through 3. Uh, he comes back to that point. 
And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High. Who did he bless? The Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever. Do you understand these are the words of Nebuchadnezzar? That type of the king of Babylon? He's praising our father. He fi it finally settled in his head. He finally got rid of the big I. And he's beginning to say, we, me and God, okay? Uh, he's beginning to say, Father, okay? Uh, and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Can you believe that statement? That's Nebuchadnezzar. I told you he was, Nebo is the god of learning, Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Nebuchadnezzar, um, and uh, he's, he got the message. When that seventh dispensation passed, what does this say to you? Even if a man is used as a type of the false Christ, even if a man is used to teach you whereby men can know that God rules the dominion of this earth, a dominion is only part of a kingdom, okay? The king and it's do his dominion. That um, uh, he's utilizing this to let you know God can give it, God can take it away. God can set up whomever he chooses. This is why you can count on God's word. You know why? It's going to go down exactly as it's written. But here you have these beautiful words spoken. It documents that whomsoever will can obtain the love and salvation of our loving Father if they recognize him. This one that even played the type is converted and wrote this fourth chapter of Daniel whereby you could grow and learn the ways of God in correcting and controlling this earth and the people in it. I don't know, you, you talked to him lately? Verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth, that's our subject, earth, are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. Our, our father does whatever he wants to. Oh, he's got an army in heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none, absolutely none, not a nobody, none, can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? What are you doing that for? Forget it. God, it is written, and, and you know, this is the beautiful part, beloved. Listen to Nebuchadnezzar. As God has spoken, so it shall be. Amen. That gives you something you can put faith in, you can put trust in it, because it's going down the way it's written. Look around you today. It would do you well. It is written. Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me. God taketh, God, uh, God giveth, God taketh away. Here he has restored. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Do you know why? Well, we could say because that type of Nebuchadnezzar is restored again, that he was only a type of in the great book of Revelation. But at the same time, I think we would be amiss if we were not to realize that God can take away, but God can restore, inasmuch as Nebuchadnezzar had basically earned it, God restored it. Why? Because he loved God. 
and he knew that uh, God's kingdom was an everlasting kingdom, and he, he wanted a part of it. Uh, I, I would imagine if you place yourself in his shoes, and it might be good for you to for a moment, and realize that he had everything. And man, while he was speaking a moment of ego, God, bam, took it all away from him. And then after having loved God and gave um, respect and homage to our Father, God restored it. God doesn't mind you being rich. As long as it's not ill-gotten gains, and this certainly was not ill-gotten gains. Uh, he now, with respect, has had restored that that God took away. And I have no doubt that uh, as to where Nebuchadnezzar's position is, I feel just as sure as sure can be that when Jesus, uh, as it is written, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, while he was yet in the tomb, went to those that had already passed on, which Nebuchadnezzar has, and he will, as a matter of fact, in chapter 5. When we get there, he's already gone. Um, passed on to the Father. I think you can count on him being a saved individual because, after all, Daniel didn't write this fourth chapter. Nebuchadnezzar did. And Nebuchadnezzar didn't say in the closing, worship that tree that is Satan. He said, you worship Almighty God who controls everything. Now, to complete the chapter, verse 37, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Man, can he take them down. Abase means make them so small you can't see them. God sets up, God takes down. God's in control. Do you believe that? Well, you can believe this because Nebuchadnezzar is an example set forth. And, you know, this might be something that you might take in mind. This can historically be documented. It happened, and historically, we can document. It only happened 400-plus uh, uh, years before Christ walked the earth, and uh, that history is pretty good. So as sure as he praised God, I'm sure he's with our Father. I'm sure he's in good stand, standing. He was wise enough to know the lessons and open-minded enough to receive the lessons taught by our Heavenly Father. I suppose one of the morals to you would be to learn the same thing. He was a type of the King of Babylon of the great book of Revelation. Much was told to you concerning the tree, and as far as I'm concerned, it took it back even to the Garden of Eden when that tree stood there, and uh, more subtle and drawing to it all, it's not a sin. Come on to me, okay? And they rush to it. You know, know your Father's word. Do not get carried away with things of the world, whereby they become more important to you than what is just, legal, and right. Then, and then only will God bless you, whereby you have the knowledge and the wisdom to know it doesn't matter what happens, whether it be in a ministry or whether it be in a farm or wherever it might be. You do right, and God will always see that you are done right by. That's the way he does. That that you can't, he gives you the knowledge and wisdom to take care of it. That's Nebuchadnezzar. I find that a fascinating chapter to have been written by an enemy in the beginning that is to say, of the book, but then truly a friend at the closing years of his life, a worshiper of the Most High God, our Heavenly Father. All right, bless your hearts. Hey, you listen a moment, won't you please?